Charles left his jacket hanging in the snow. Welcome back to our off-grid adventure in Vermont where we're living in our travel trailer while finishing the inside of our yurt. It's January now, and some of you will remember the PEX pipe Charles installed for radiant floor heat. That was back in October. And he had promised to pressure test it again after the yurt was up. I am putting pressure back on our radiant floor tubing to make sure it's still intact and I'm going to leave pressure on it so when I'm working out here if I ever hear a hissing sound I'll know I hit my line and I need to repair it which might be a pain in the butt but hopefully that won't happen the main event around here lately has been the electrical wiring some of the wires and the outlets and the switches will be hidden behind wall panels just like in a regular house after the yurt is finished. But one of the unique challenges of wiring a yurt is that most of the electrical equipment won't blend in very easily. This will be our permanent breaker box, main breaker box. This one will turn basically into a dump load box. This, will, this one will only be active when we have lots of power coming in. When our batteries are charged and we have extra power, I'll have things like a hot water heater that will run on this one. Good afternoon. Charles has been working on wiring out here in the yurt for several days off and on. Every time I come out here, there seems to be a few more switch and outlet boxes and a few more wires across the wall. But basically we have tried to anticipate all the possible places that we might want outlets and switches. tucking these wires in between the bender board and the outside skin. Tucking it down in there where you can't see it. I was trying to do some indoor chores today and I heard some power tools coming from the yurt where there was only supposed to be wiring going on. And I caught Charles trying to put up some walls without being on camera. It's a little wing wall to close in our closet area. So let us be able to put our closet rod clothes hangers. And here is the other wing wall that Charles put up a few minutes ago. Those little walls have to go up before he can complete the rough in of the electrical boxes. What are you doing up there, Charles? Looking out the dome. What are you supposed to be doing up there, Charles? Figuring out how to run this wire down to those light switches. Ladder. 
ready to switch main power to the main panel. As some of you will remember, we brought in this thick bundle of wires a few months ago from the shed where they're hooked up to the solar power inverter and batteries. Part of the reason we make our own power is that it would be very expensive to bring electricity all the way up our long driveway and that in turn made the property a less expensive investment. Of course, it's a lot of work to set up and manage our own system, but it's a perfect fit for Charles, who is an electrical engineer and used to get paid to design solar systems for other people. I like being able to produce my own power and not be reliant on somebody else. And what is the biggest challenge about it? The hardest part about being off-grid is basically just managing your loads. Laundry, dishwasher, stuff like that is going to be useful to do on sunny days, especially in the wintertime. I mean, in the wintertime it's going to be hard. Harder. When there's multiple cloudy days in a row and your batteries start getting low, you got to figure out what you got to do. Like running a generator to charge the batteries as a backup plan. Right now, we could use either propane or gasoline in our small generator to charge the RV batteries. We haven't had to do it yet, but I don't think we'll get through the winter without it. And we'll buy a larger generator that can charge the big battery bank in the shed sometime between now and next winter. The manufacturer of that generator is in Maine, so we might even take a road trip to go pick it up. Charles is still waiting on a few more breakers to get this project completely finished, along with some outlets and switches coming in the mail. And he still needs to wire up the pump for the rainwater collection system. We also need to get back to work on the rocket mass heater project, and we look forward to paneling the walls for the kitchen, bathroom, and closet. We're glad you could join us today, and we'll see you again in the next project.